How's it going, everybody? Chaotic Meatball here, and welcome back to the channel. It actually feels good to be saying that again. So today, we're returning to the legendary speedrun tier list of Fire and Leaf Green with Latios. And oh boy, we are in for some hell. We start with Psywave, a 80% accurate 15 power point move that does random damage based on your current level times a random number between 0 and 10 plus 5 divided by 10 rounded down. For instance, I'm level 12 and I roll a 4. This means that there will be 12 times 0 0.9, which is 10.8, rounding down to 10 damage. Overall, it's just a terrible move, and Stab doesn't affect it. It's literally less accurate than Fire Blast, and only has 15 power points. Not to mention the other move we start out with? Memento. A move that faints Latios immediately, so that means we can't even get down to struggle instead of dealing with this trash move. This is a big problem, and one we'll likely have to address either before Brock or soon after, probably before Misty. Well, at least our base stats look pretty nice, with a base stat total of 600 and being centered around the special side. It's nice especially because dragon moves are special in this game, meaning stuff like Dragon Claw and Dragon Breath is going to hit a lot harder than it would in future games. Base 110 speed really helps as well, so past this beginning with Psywave, this run should be pretty quick, but definitely not as quick as the other legendaries, that's for sure. But before we get into the run itself, I'd like to highly implore you to like and subscribe to the channel, as well as turn on all bell notifications. After this channel was hacked, we lost a ton of channel momentum to where I'm only pulling about one-tenth of the viewers on videos, so I'm going to post some nutty videos in the coming weeks to bring us back to fruition. Also, directly after this video is premiered and goes live, I'll be streaming over on twitch.tv slash chaoticmeatballtv, link in the description, which I'm about halfway to getting Twitch partner. I just need to hit that average 75 viewers during my streams, so if you can stop in, I'd highly appreciate it. With all that being said, let's get into the video. So, I replaced Charmander with Latios so that he'd have Squirtle, something that will actually have a super effective move on me in the form of Bite since for some reason he doesn't have Ice Beam, but hey, we'll take what we can get. I managed to take him down in a few Psy Waves, luckily landing them without the accuracy being a total pain, winning me the battle. Everything's just hunky-dory up until Viridian Forest, where we start to white out. Like, every single battle white out. A few of the trainers here actually have two or three Pokemon, and matching that with how Psy Wave works, it's basically luck in whether or not I make it through. And yes, Psywave doesn't hit for super effective damage on something like Weedle or Kakuna. A shame, really, but I don't expect nearly anything out of Psywave anyway. I just want to get rid of it as soon as I have enough attacks to warrant it. I managed to get out of the forest at level 9, and while I'm nowhere near level 20, I figured I'd at least see what I could do as both the Camper and Brock himself have both two Pokémon each. And if seven Psywaves are enough to KO each Pokémon, I'd at least be able to make progress instead of grinding on needless Pokémon. Camper Liam went perfectly fine, as I managed to take him down on the first attempt, getting Latios to level 10. I feel like I should be able to take Brock down at this level, but we'll see. He leads with Geodude, so I of course miss my first Psywave. Great start there, buddy, but the next three Psywaves land in rapid succession, giving me 11 for Onyx. I hit the first one as he lowers my speed with Rock Tomb, meaning he is now faster, hitting Bind. I hit the second Psywave for minimal damage as he goes for Tackle next turn, with Psywave actually doing pretty good damage this time. Two more turns, two Psywaves, and I'm able to pull off the victory, sliding by relatively close. But I'm glad I was able to make some progress instead of having to grind all the way up to level 20 before Brock with a Legendary of all things. Before leaving, I went to the Mart to grab Repels and Escape Ropes, leaving me to take out Route 3. I figured it would be wise to see if Rock Tomb could be taught to Latios, since I didn't remember but sure enough, it can't be taught, so I'm still stuck with Psywave. This made me decide I needed to fight every single trainer on the route in order to get up to level 20. I know that I'm not going to be able to make it through the Rival or Misty over in Cerulean City if I don't hit this level and get Dragon Breath, so I've got to think ahead and destroy everyone in my path before anything can destroy me, of course. Simple thinking, but it still is a pain since I'm still whiting out to all of my power points just running out. Fighting all of the trainers still didn't do enough for Latios, since it ended up just barely getting to level 19 before the end of the cave. Well, when I arrived in Cerulean City, I figured that, yeah, we're gonna need that rare candy from Mount Moon, I'm not wasting any more time. I got Dragon Breath at level 20, replacing Memento so in case I have to go and use Struggle, I can without the battle immediately ending. Alright, Misty time. 
She starts off with Staryu, so I went for Dragon Breath, which one shot. Now this is what I'm talking about, stupid Psywave couldn't do that at all. Starmie hits a critical swift after coming out and out speeding, but Dragon Breath does did too much, allowing me to finish it off next turn after a second swift, winning me the battle in short order. I can't say that I'm surprised now that I have Dragon Breath, but I do feel like the run is going to start moving smoothly from here on out. My rival's the next major battle on our list, starting with Pidgeotto, so I went for Psy Wave, missing, and getting hit with Sand Attack. Well, time to just go for Dragon Breath. It's a one-shot, should have just gone for that instead of saving Dragon Breath, leading to Rattata. I missed with Dragon Breath for the first attack, but the second landed after a Tail Whip leading to Squirtle. Unfortunately, I missed again. But hey, we'll just try again. Oh, I missed again. Third time's the charm? Yeah, there we go. I, at least I didn't have to deal with Psy Wave exclusively. I paralyzed and barely missed the KO, finishing Squirtle off with a Psy Wave next turn. Last up is Abra, and since it only has teleport, I just kept clicking Dragon Breath to finish it off. And I somehow had to click on it four times, all because of a single freaking sand attack. Literally kill me, please. Statistics clearly don't like me. Routes 24 and 25 weren't nearly anywhere difficult thanks to Dragon Breath being a great move to take out things quickly, getting to level 24 by the end of it, and getting the SS ticket. Skipping ahead a bit, I made my way down to Route 6, grabbing the Hidden Rare Candy on the way down to Vermilion City. Of course, as always, grabbing the Farfetch Trade and the Bike Voucher are required, as well as heading into the SSN itself for the third rival battle. He leads with Pidgeotto, and because I'm not dumb, I actually use Dragon Breath to take it out in one shot, leading to Wartortle. Dragon Breath does a big ol' bunch of damage, but Psy Wave finishes it off after missing once. Not a big deal, but I do wish it wasn't so inaccurate. <sighs> Raticate is a one-shot with Dragon Breath, leaving just Kadabra to go down to the same move. I'd like to get another move here soon, and fortunately I can teach Latio Shockwave, but I'll have to beat Lieutenant Surge first to get that TM, so let's go whip his booty into next week. He leads with Voltorb, going down to Dragon Breath, leading to Pikachu, who also goes down to Dragon Breath. Third out is Raichu, and it goes down to a critical Dragon Breath. Not sure if that mattered, but hey, at least I'm not getting double team stalled, since that tends to happen a little bit too much when it comes to Lieutenant Surge. But I digress. I also decided to give Latios the TM for Water Pulse, since my next attacking move by level up is Luster Purge at level 35 with a whopping 5 power points, so just saving time by using that was my best bet. Skipping ahead through Route 9, Rock Tunnel, and Route 8, I managed to get to level 32 by the end of the trainers in Erica's Gym. I still don't have a Psychic-type move, but I did give Latios the return TM that I grabbed south of Lavender Town. She leads with Victory Bell, so I went for a return, doing a little under half as she went for Stun Sport. Unfortunately, she did paralyze me, but next turn I managed to turn it around, taking an Acid before hitting a Dragon Breath for the KO and leading to Tangela. She goes for Ingrain, but of course Latios is a madman, hitting a critical Dragon Breath to KO, leading to Vileplume. And he's even more of a madman because the same happens again. After taking an Acid, I hit another critical hit, sealing up the battle with nothing left to prove, other than the fact that I probably would have won without criticals, but I'll take them anyway. Well, normally I take on Giovanni before Erica, but this time I'm doing it after, so after grabbing Fly, I'm forced to do that. Unfortunately, by the end of the hideout in Celadon, though, I finally got to... level 34. Yeah, we're not quite at Luster Purge territory yet, but we do get to take on Giovanni, and I'll probably have it, leaving the rival fight over in Lavender Town, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Mostly because I'm just realizing that I could have grabbed Psychic over Saffron City, even before Erica. Dang it, I always forget about dumb stuff like that. Anyway, it's not like it was a hindrance, as Giovanni kicks off with Onyx, an easy one-shot with Dragon Breath as he goes into Kangaskhan second. Fake Out does a little bit of damage, but my first Dragon Breath manages to do half and paralyze him as he uses Bite for a small amount of damage. But I get a low roll on the second Dragon Breath, leading to a massive Mega Punch that puts me into low yellow HP. A third Dragon Breath finishes Kangaskhan off, leading just Rhyhorn. I still have Water Pulse, so it's an easy one-shot, finishing off the battle without a struggle, both figuratively and literally. Well, you know who's next. Rival 4 is up, and honestly his battle is nowhere near difficult, since he still uses a majority of not fully evolved Pokémon. He leads with Pidgeotto for the third time, so Dragon Breath for the third time is a one-shot, leading to Wartortle. It's a two-shot, only using Withdraw, so no damage on me, leading to a Level Up and Luster Purge, replacing Protect. 
Third up is Growlithe, a one-shot with Water Pulse, as is Kadabra with Return, leaving just Execute. Also a one-shot, but with Dragon Breath instead. As I said, no difficulty whatsoever, but I will definitely take the Luster Purge. Naturally, every battle is easy throughout the area, allowing me to get the free rare candy near the end, and the Poke Flute from Mr. Fuji after rescuing him from Team Rocket. Well, I think I need to take down Silphco before heading over to Fuchsia City, since I figured it would be nice to have a little bit of a challenge in this, well, challenge. But we'll see. After grabbing the keycard, I ran into an optional trainer, because of course I did, but it wasn't that big of a deal. So after not healing, because I wanted to try to go fast, it's time to take down that Rival 5 battle. He leads with Pidgeot, so I went for Luster Purge, doing a little bit over half after taking a wing attack, leading to Blastoise after a second. He uses Protect, so I swapped to Dragon Breath, hitting another Protect after landing one and paralyzing. But hey, this is what happens when you don't heal. So, I got KO'd and went ahead and healed afterwards by resetting. You know, we save before our bosses instead of having moments like this where- I just lost to a nose pass, are you kidding me? That's cool. If I didn't save, I'm ending my life on stream. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Fun fact, that actually happened in my house. Anyway, attempt number two on Rival 5 time and Pidgeot's the lead again, so I went for Luster Purge once again, taking a weak wing attack and KOing next turn. Blastoise is second, so I went for Dragon Breath instead of Luster Purge, hitting it as it landed Bite, but next turn I was expecting a Protect, so I used another Dragon Breath, following up with a critical Luster Purge to finish it off. Third on my plate is Growlithe, not too big of a deal thanks to Water Pulse, leading to Execute. I knew it wasn't going to live through a Dragon Breath, leaving just Alakazam, which doesn't have a single attack outside of Future Sight. So it's only a few attacks, Recover Stall, and a few more attacks later to take it down, leaving just Giovanni to finish off the area. Also, I guess I'll make a comment game this time. Throw a name down below in the comment section, and whichever one gets the most upvotes, I'll name my next Lapras for the next Legendary Speedrun. Why? Eh, I don't know, I just like common engagement and that sort of thing is needed after the whole hack channel thing killed the momentum of my channel. Thanks guys, and let's get into that there Giovanni fight, because lord knows I need some money after that happened. We begin against a Nidorino, not a challenge thanks to Luster Purge, taking him down instantly and leading into Nidoqueen. I used the same move, but it didn't nearly KO, but it did lower her special defense, so I went for Dragon Breath to finish her off, leveling up and getting Psychic which has more power, power points, and the same chance to lower special defense. So I replaced Luster Purge, why wouldn't I? Leading into Kangaskhan. It uses Fake Out, but Psychic is just too much for her to handle, allowing me to follow up with a Water Pulse, finishing it off, and leaving just Rhyhorn to go down to Water Pulse as well. Alright, now to focus on the rest of the gym leaders. Since I'm still in Saffron City, I'm gonna go out of an order a wee bit and go for Sabrina, who leads with Kadabra. Returns a one-shot, perfect, leading into Venomoth, a one-shot with Psychic, leading into Mr. Mime, which is a two-shot with Dragon Breath. Which is great, since Psybeam does nearly nothing, leaving just Alakazam to go down to two Dragon Breaths as well, hitting a weak Psychic before going down and leading to my victory. Good stuff! Very easy, and only three more to go. Koga's next on the list, and since he's a Poison-type user, I figured I'd go for him first, because he's going to be super easy. So I went down through Cycling Road, grabbing the Power Point up, Rare Candy, and Max Elixir before making it to Fuchsia, and running right over to him. You're a dead one, son. Coughing's a one-shot with Psychic. Muck's a one-shot with Psychic. Coughing number two's a one-shot with Psychic. Oh yeah, I guess Weezing's also a one-shot with Psychic. Told you you were dead, bud. Try again next time. Well, with that all out of the way, let's just skip to the last gym fights, because you know that I get the stupid TMs, then I have to go to the Pokemon Mansion and all that stupid crap. If you've played these games, you know what you do to beat them. So, by the time I got to Blaine's, Latios was a solid level 46, so that's good, especially with Surf and Toe, replacing Water Pulse for the added power. It one-shots Growlithe, and Arcanine, and Ponyta, and Rapidash. Shocking. Now let's see how Giovanni keeps up with it. Rhyhorn's a one-shot. Doug Trio is too. Oh yeah, Nidoqueen's third, and I decided to change things up, one-shotting it with Psychic instead, as well as Nidoking. But then yeah, I went back to surf for Rhyhorn number two, finishing him off for the last time. Good stuff. Now let's get to those League battles. Is what I would say if we didn't have Rival 6 first. This'll be a quick one. 
Pidgeot's up first, so I went for Psychic. Barely not one-shotting as Pidgeot hits a wing, wing attack, leaving it free to go down to return and leading to Blastoise. I figured Dragon Breath would be the wisest choice, expecting Protect, but only getting hit with a single bite as I land two of them and a Psychic before going down, leading to Rhyhorn. I should be clear for the rest of this fight, so... I took down Rhyhorn and Growlithe with Surf, Exude with Dragon Breath, and Alakazam with three Surfs after a Calm Mind and a Mist Disable. Well, I kind of expected Alakazam to KO me at that point, but hey, I'll take a first try victory. With one victory road later, it's time for a single preparation that will definitely help me for the rest of the league, and that's the TM for Thunderbolt. Yeah, you guys thought I was going to forget about it this time. Well, fear not, I have not forgotten about it because I am 100% going to need it for Lorelei. Now, I realized that I needed to get rid of Dragon Breath if I wanted to use this move to the fullest extent, but I forgot to grab Dragon Claw from the victory road before entering the room. Well, that was a bad move, but hey, I think I can still make it through without that big of a loss. I, of course, did lose on my first few attempts since I attempted to take down Lorelei without rare candies, so that was a bit of a whoopsie, but after using the rare candies I had remaining and a held Chesto Berry, it was plenty enough. She leads with Dugong, so with a Calm Mind, I'm able to get through Safeguard untouched, hitting a Thunderbolt for the one-shot and leading to Lapras. I outspeed and one-shot with Thunderbolt, leading to Slowbro, who falls to the same fate, leading to Jinx. This thing's actually pretty specially tanky, so even though I went ahead and used Thunderbolt, it only did about 75% damage. And of course she goes for Lovely Kiss, putting me to sleep, but of course it's immediately nullified thanks to the Chesto Berry, allowing me to finish it with a few Thunderbolts, enough of course to get through the dumb full restores that just waste time, leaving Cloyster to go down to Thunderbolt, and that's one down for to go. Bruno's up next, and you shouldn't be surprised that this is a complete sweep thanks to Surf and Psychic. Literally everything just goes down to a single attack each. Literally flooring him so hard that he can't even blame himself for losing. I just had the perfect Pokemon. Sorry, buddy. Better luck next time. Go join Koga in the pity party. Two down, three to go. Third up is Agatha, and yeah, I just reset after making a mistake of using Calm Mind before she started setting up Double Team. Yeah, I hate this move, unless I'm using it. And even then, I hate it because of the fact that I have to essentially commit cheese to win, which is not at all interesting. So let's try again, shall we? I outspeed her first Gengar, using Psychic to KO and leading to Golbat. I did the same. Cool, but what about Arbok? Down as well. Gengar number two? Second verse, same as the first. And Haunter? Yeah, if the adults didn't survive, what makes you think that kid's gonna have a chance of living? Alrighty, let's get into Lance because I think he's going to be the only one who actually gives me any challenge, and he's a first try victory. God, I just want some challenge, please. Then again, I just used Calm Mind twice and wrecked his team that way, so if I want a challenge, I would have just not used Calm Mind, but I'm a bit of a wussy. I used Calm Mind twice, taking a bite and Dragon Rage from Gyarados before taking it out with Thunderbolt. Both Dragonairs end up falling to Psychic, as does Dragonite, Oh, wait, no, it actually didn't go down, so I guess I'll use two more after a full restore. Oh, wait, there's another full restore. Just two more. There we go. Leaving just Aerodactyl, which goes down to Surf, since I should save the PP of my other moves. Alright, please, final rival fight. Can you give me a challenge? Just slightly. At least put me on the edge of my seat. That's all I ask. Well, let's see. So he leads with Pidgeot. I knew this, so I went for Calm Mind, since I don't fear anything but more than a single sand attack. He does go for it immediately, cutting off my major setup, so I use Thunderbolt to KO, leading to Arcanine, which goes down to a Surf. Blastoise is third, going down to Thunderbolt and leading to Alakazam, who barely doesn't go down to Surf. So of course, as he uses a full restore, I used one more Calm Mind to get that 100% chance of KO next turn with Surf, leading to Rhydon, who is also down to a one-shot, leaving just Executor who I have nothing for other than resistant attacks. So I just went for Psychic, doing over half as he used Light Screen. But somehow Psychic's able to still two-shot afterwards, winning the battle and finishing the game with a time of four hours exactly. Well, I had a feeling that this was going to be slow thanks to the whole Psywave BS thing at the beginning of the game. But I didn't expect it to be this slow. Seriously? Latios is at the bottom? Four hours? I could have done better than that, but... Hey, maybe I couldn't. Uh, maybe I could. It would have taken a little bit more data. Here at Chaotic Meatball Productions, we don't exactly go for much more than first tries, so here we are. 
But, of course, I will have to deal with this again with Latias, but at least we won't have to deal with that stupid Memento move. That really messed up the beginning of this run and not being able to use the Struggle strat, but I think it won't be a problem next time. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and again, if you haven't subscribed, like the video, turn on notifications, follow the Twitch channel, and follow the Twitter account, please do. And if you do, I'll give you a little heart on your comment below, because I really do appreciate it, and the outpour of support during the three days of panic while my channel was down was actually really heartwarming, and I thank each and every one of you who reached out to see what was up. With that said, I'll see you guys on the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great rest of your day.